Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today I'm going to cover a day trade that I did make on Plug Power Technology Stock or Plug, Plug Stock. Now, Plug Stock has been in a tear. The whole EV sector has been just going exponentially. Uh, Plug Power, Power has actually uh, tripled since November of last year. Uh, because it has been so extended, uh, I felt like there was an opportunity to short it on a relief pullback, uh, on a first red day type of setup. Now, this move especially recently happened because of the announcement they made with a partnership with the group Renault. Uh, it's a French auto manufacturer uh, that has many auto brands. Uh, one of the most famous brands that is sold, widely sold here in the U.S. is actually Nissan. So all those Nissan cars is actually the whole company is owned by Group Renault. So very interesting to know that. Now, um, what I'm going to do is kind of cover how I shorted it. Now, it, very interesting because I did short it and I made some money in the first short and the stock started to squeeze me out. And I'm going to talk about that trade right here in the details and why I believe that happened. Um, and I totally messed up. I'm not going to lie. I made a couple discipline errors. I messed up on my process. Uh, so I want to talk about all the details down below. Uh, and so actually, if you have any questions, ask them down below in the YouTube comments. If you actually shorted plug power uh, stock today, let me know what was your thought process. Now, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe down to the channel down below. Let me share my screen and let's get started. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the chart, first of all. So this is plug, plug stock. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, guys, uh, this stock has pretty much been on a tear, uh, you know, since November of uh, last year. You see, it, it was at twenty dollars. Now it's at over sixty, so over three times the the the, the price, three hundred percent, which is insane. Um, and really, the reason why I wanted to short it was just because of the recent move. You know, you see this huge move. Uh, definitely, these breakouts right here. Uh, it held this level, broke out again, and especially this breakout was based on that news with the partnership with Reno Group Reno. Uh, so today, I felt like there was gonna there was an exhaustion move pre market. Not only that, but also uh, if you look take a look at the Bollinger Bands, um, it was definitely trading way above the Bollinger Bands. So again, the Bollinger Bands trading above this Bollinger Band tells me that the stock is overbought. Also, if you look at the stochastics down below, it's trading way above 80 level. Again, another indicator that's telling me that it's overbought. So because of those reasons, I was short buys and I was looking for a first red day short. Now, just to kind of explain um, the, the, the first red day short, guys, uh, how that works is when a stock has been going up so much so quick, uh, usually there's going to be an exhaustion or blow off type of move or candle. And that's when pretty much all the shorts have covered and all the longs are feeling like, you know what, I think I'm ready to take my profits, you know? Um, and usually it happens when the stock starts to go red or starts to, to, so especially when the stock has been going up, like they're off 5% one day, next day they're up 5% again, next day they're up another 5%. So they're going up, up and up every single day. And then there's one day when it starts to go down and it's negative, maybe 1%. And then investors start freaking out. They're like, you know what? I think it's time to take my profit. Let's call it a day. I, I double my money or whatever the case may be. And it causes a massive sell-off of the stock. Uh, and I'm going to show an example of Tesla uh, in, in, this, in this trade too. So uh, going back to the screen, uh, you know, so that was pretty much what I was looking for on plug. I was looking for it to kind of go down 5% or more, um, you know, for the day. And it ended up, ended up being up 5%. So let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, pretty much the, uh, the, the day trade. So in terms of the news, uh, again, it's all over the, it's all over, uh, you know, very, if you Google, uh, you know, Reno and plug power, uh, technology, fuel cell commercial uh, news, you will find it right here. So most of this, this technology is going to be used in their commercial vehicles, uh, but all information is here. And again, um, it's, it's all there. Uh, but again, that is what really caused this huge move. Uh, and that was especially yesterday. And I mean, it literally the stock just kept trending up, kept trending up. Even uh, after hours, it was going up. And today pre-market, it had a little bit of a sell-off, uh, but it bounced off and held. Uh, but to me, it kind of looked like it was already kind of exhausting itself and the sell-off was going to happen. 
and actually it did. Uh, it did have a, a week open. And, uh, and, and, pretty, and, and kind of in terms of a trend, this is a trend that I was also looking at too as well. So hopefully you guys, it would have kind of catch that in terms of what I was looking for. So pre-market, I kind of formed this little trend right here. Um, and I felt that, hey, if it breaks below this trend right here, I think we're going to get a sell off. And, uh, and it did happen. It did happen. We did have this, this, uh, this break of this trend. So, um, and again, based on this kind of this price action, you know, kind of like a fail fall through momentum, meaning that the, the momentum is kind of failing. So we're going to get a sell off. Um, and again, we did get that sell off that I was expecting. Now I wasn't able to catch the, the, the move. I wasn't able to cast a short up below 69. If you really look at this, this right here, um, it looks like to me, a lot of shorts had the same idea as the short below 69, but there was this huge candle that literally stopped out all the shorts, took the shares and shorted again. And most likely, again, people can't do that. This is definitely an algorithm. This is definitely a computer uh, system doing this uh, because it literally stopped out a whole bunch of people and it continued to sell off. Now, after I saw this, I decided to kind of wait um, and on a pullback. It did pull back. I would have some shares to kind of short here at uh, the, the, the R2 R uh, pivot level here around 69.50s. It didn't quite get there. It actually rejected the volume weight average price. So it went up to like 69.50s. So I was pretty much um, like 50 cents. Uh, uh, actually more like uh, 69. Yeah, more like, uh, yeah, 50 cents off or something like that which kind of was unfortunate because I really wanted to get those short, the share short around that level, but that's okay. Uh, I felt like, Hey, if, if, uh, if we had we hit new lows, if it breaks low a day, I think this is going to continue to sell. Uh, so it did bring new break uh, new lows and I did end up, uh, did up, it did short. My stop was above the volume weight of average price and it continued to sell. It continued to sell. I decided to cover in a very, very important level here at 65. And uh, I was actually looking for a further move down. You know, like I said, I, uh, a first red day, usually the stock is down 5% or more. Uh, and the best ones are the ones that when a stock is down 10% or more, uh, which is amazing. So uh, my, next, uh, my next target was going to be here at the um, S1 pivot level. But it decided to bounce from this, uh, this uh, midpoint, level, uh, midpoint pivot level. And my thought process was like, okay, if it breaks above... Uh, the the uh, previous close and it goes green again. I'm out. I'm stopping out, uh, and that's pretty much what I did. So I, I still felt that uh, this first red day was still going to work out. Again, we had this uh, this this kind of like this fail fall through type of price action where momentum was kind of exhausting, and we had a huge sell off. So I felt this this sell off was going to continue. So I was pretty pretty uh, confident uh, and, and a little bit cocky because. That's really where I made my mistake uh, because usually a grid, another good area to kind of short on our first red day is are any pullbacks to pre-market levels. So you guys can see this level at 67. That was a really good area to kind of reshort. Uh, so I took my profits. I had a really nice gain the first trade and I decided to short again um, on here uh, on 67 um, and kind of, and kind of, and pretty, and this is where I made my mistake, by the way. Because I had a really nice gain already, um, I did not actually put a hard stop. <laughs> you know, I did not put a hard stop, but I actually did put a a a a a, 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 a an order to cover, but not a hard stop. So that was my first mistake. And again, I was being very flexible because I had a pretty decent gain already. Um, I was kind of risking this range between uh, 67 and uh, and 70, so it was a pretty big a big range. So again, I wasn't really too, you know, worried about uh, getting stopped out anytime soon because I had a really big range that I was kind of risky. And also I had a really nice win already. And that's what things got, you know, tricky uh, because um, it started to kind of pull back, put back down. And then it started to kind of squeeze little by little. Um, I actually, the mistake that I made was not to follow my systematic process. My systematic process tells me that when I get short and we get a little pullback 
And if it breaks above the volume weighted average price, especially on a first red date, I need to get out and stop out. This is exactly what I did in Tesla when I shorted the first time a couple of days ago. So I wanted to try to show you that. Um, uh, let me give me a couple more days. There you go. And this is pretty much what I did. The first time I shorted uh, on Tesla on a first red day, again, shorted um, on a break of new lows and it broke above the volume with its price and I stopped out and I was good. And that was pretty much it. I let it go and it was the right move because it continued to, to kind of sell off. The next day uh, we had our first red day, uh, which I did catch again, sold off uh, the, the, the low of the day, took our profits. And this is where I made my, this is what I wanted to do. I literally wanted to mimic actually Tesla short. You know, if you look at this, this, this Tesla, I actually, again, I made a mistake here in my Tesla the other day, but it actually, you know, pulled back to pre-market lows, pre, pre-market lows, you know, which right here at 82.50 and they held. So that's what I was expecting for plug power for this levels to hold. And again, keep going down. So that's exactly what I was looking for plug power. Uh, but that's where I made the mistake where again, I was very, very confident on that today was going to be the first red date. I was already up. I was being very, very confident. Uh, you could almost say cocky and that's what hurt me. Um, so uh, I was, I guess you could say, playing the cushion game too, because I had a really nice win. I let it kind of pull against me. I again, didn't have a hard stop. The, the, we know once I was actually at the same time trading another stock, which I'm going to cover in a bit. And it kept, you know, pushing away. And my thought process was like, okay, worst case scenario, if this keeps pushing, I am going to short and add at 70, another very important level on the chart. And if it continues to worse, if it continues to trend up, I'm going to stop out at higher day. And the worst, the worst case scenario, it actually happened. So that's where I not only did I lose my gains on the first short, uh, but I ended up losing uh, more uh, than I usually tend to risk. So I actually ended up taking a pretty decent green day to a more than average red day uh, on that mistake. So I wanted to cover the psychology behind it, guys, because um, a lot of traders, you know, especially when you start making money, you start doing pretty good, you start to loosen up and, and you start to, you know, forget about the systematic process because in order for you to become a consistently profitable trader, you have to consistently keep a systematic process to protect your, your gains and to take your profits. And that is the mistake that I made. And when you make those mistakes, they will cost you. And the worst case scenario could always happen and most likely will happen. I believe that is uh, Moore's law or some sort of law. I forgot what it is. So uh, again, back to the chart uh, and to kind of cover that trade. Uh, so the worst thing, the worst thing that could happen actually happened. But again, one of the things that I want to mention that uh, was very, very important that I did see uh, on the chart was these levels, these two levels, 65 and 70. And you may ask, why are these things green? And the reason they're green is because I noticed on the options, they were very, very, those, these levels were, were, were very important options levels. There was a lot of uh, open interest and a lot of volume traded at these levels, 65 and 70. And you can see the, the options levels held. You know, whoever put big money on these weekly options at 65, call options 65 and 70, they decided to kind of push the stock to hold up to those levels and take their profits. So if you can see, it could have been market makers or algos, but somebody was pushing, I personally believe, with all goes, um, you know, is it possible for one person, one day trader to do this? It takes uh, a huge amounts of money, huge amounts of capital to move stock price like this. If you could tell on the look, if you look in the side, on the left side, there's 152 million shares traded. It's impossible for one day trader to do this. No, this, these are most likely all gold machines pushing the stock and they know what they're doing. So if you kind of take a look at this, you could kind of tell all the, all the, all the short sellers that got stopped out. You can kind of tell right here that it got stopped out at 69 right here. You see this, this wick on the one minute with a huge volume. That's pretty much a short sell is getting stopped out and, and buying to cover. The other area right here was around uh, 70. 
um, you know, on this, and there's uh, actually on, yeah, it's a 70 level on the 70, 30, you know, you see the huge wick on the one minute and huge volume. Another area was short sellers got stopped out. The other area where short sellers got stopped out was here at 72. You know, you could tell right away looking at the what is wick and also the volume. So these indicators tell you that whoever was pushing the stock, they did it on purpose. They wanted to push their stock. And most likely I personally believe was to cover their options trades because there is huge amount of volume open interest on level of 65 and 70. So in order for those option traders to actually be profitable, the stock price needs to be at those levels. So it kind of forces machines to push those prices. So that is something that I want you guys to keep in mind when trading to look at the options, because if you look at over here, there was another short squeeze right here, huge short squeeze, you know, on this, especially this pivot right here, 7301 took all the shares, and it sold off. So all this short, short sellers got stopped out. Uh, so they were, they were manipulating the price. It is super obvious, guys. This price was absolutely manipulated. That's the reason why, again, guys, trading is about systematic processes in terms of your, you know, your target and your styles because as soon as you stop doing your systematic process, you will lose and you will lose big. And that's what happened to me today. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Unplug. I, I do want to kind of cover another trade. You know, one of the reasons that, again, uh, I kind of, you know, let it was a little bit loosey goosey, you could say, on unplug uh, stock was because I was also on XPEG. I did trade XPEG today. Um, and the reason why it was pretty simple uh, there was a huge move the day before, uh, some news uh, in terms of. Uh, um, I believe uh, they, yeah, they bought a company or they're raising money. So there was some really big news, huge move. So I was looking for a uh, low hanging fruit, seconds continuation on a boss of the pivot level. I did buy the pivot and my, my uh, pretty much my, my thought price was to kind of, you know, take some profits once it breaks above the volume leverage price, as long as before zombie hours, before 9.30 a.m. Central time. So as soon as 9.30 uh, came about, I took profits. I took half because I felt like this trend might have actually a hold. It continued to trend, so I didn't want to take all of it out, and I put my stop below uh, my my buy price, and I did get stopped on the rest. It did push a little bit more, but it was not enough. But I still made a, a decent win trade here, so I was okay with that. Um, it did kind of help mitigate my loss with plug, but overall, guys, the main main thing that I want to kind of emphasize today is that. Trading, especially day trading, is about a systematic process. Do not play the cushion game uh, because as soon as you play the cushion game, your discipline goes out the window, your systematic process goes out the window, and that's not how you win as a day trader. That's not how you become a consistently profitable trader. Again, in order to become a consistently profitable trader, you have to keep a consistently um, consistently process, consistent, systematic process day in, day out. And then that will, will help you. And that will make sure you're a consistently profitable trader and you keep a consistently systematic process. If you keep a consistent systematic process, you will become a consistently profitable trader. That is it said and done. If you guys have any questions, ask them down below in the YouTube comments. Let me know what you guys think. If you shorted plug power, what was your thought process? Again, uh, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe in the channel down below, and you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.